Welcome to Haken, an Animal Crossing podcast. This show is dedicated to Dragonflame323, our newest Patreon patron. I'm your host, Chewy Plays Nintendo, joined with my co-host, Sergio. And today, we have a big show for you because it is the start of our weekly schedule. That's right, Haken, an Animal Crossing podcast, will now show up weekly in your feed. And with that weekly schedule comes big updates. So today, we're going to be covering the latest slew of Pocket Camp updates, my recent journey back into New Leaf, our favorite non-villager characters, and what we think about the current market for Animal Crossing. So let's go ahead and get started because it, it is a big day today, Sergio. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. We're very excited to bring Haken to a weekly schedule though, for sure. Yeah, that's big. I think I, I think our discussion about this probably lasted like two sentences <laughs> right. on Discord. I was just like, hey, what do you think of doing it weekly? And you're just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> So, yeah, it was an easy decision. But anyways, let's go ahead. Um, So Pocket Camp has seen some huge updates. And one thing that we actually didn't list because this just happened today is that spring has sprung. Mm -hmm. Um, What do you think of the new green look to your campsite? Oh, I love it. I think it goes really well. We're going to talk more about it, but with the light brown, you know, flooring (laughs) that now we have. Yeah, it, looks, oh, yeah. it just looks really stunning. And also the flowers. Yeah, it looks super good. Um, this is our first time seeing greenery that's actually green in this game. Because right. when the game came out, it was the middle of November, right? Right. So by then, everything was in autumn mode. Right, um, right. And now the garden but, looks like a real garden. <laughs> it looks so much better. I yeah. actually... Okay, I've looked at your notes a little bit, but I haven't walked into my garden yet because I'm still like a little underwhelmed by the garden overall. Mm. I, essentially, I planted some flowers just in case I would need them for um, mm. those new tasks. Right. Um, but yeah, I haven't done gone to the garden except seeing it from the side. And already I was like, this looks so good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got to say, I... Usually autumn is my favorite time, but since we haven't seen this green look to Animal Crossing yet, I'm really loving it. Yeah, yeah, it looks awesome. Yeah, so that's not the only thing that was updated. That was just today, but the most recent updates we've gotten are, we've got a whole list of them. So the first I'm going to talk about is Break Tapper, which we talked a little bit about how we thought it would work. And now we actually know. So Break Tapper, essentially you use three friend powders and you can play this little slot machine game. And what I've noticed is that the slot machine game does not work well if your phone is just slow. (laughs) Um, Because sometimes I'll start playing and my phone's just like not keeping up with loading everything. And so... It, it makes break tapper truly terrible <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> because I can't click, I, I can't time my clicks at all. So it's super hard. Um, the other thing, so you get a bunch of special things. Um, well, there are a bunch of things you can get. So um, there are crafting materials, essences, mm-hmm. some clothing and a couple like furniture pieces. Um, I'd say the clothing and the furniture slash statue thing are the things that are must-haves right. through it. Um, the problem is that statue is like 10,000 caps, Jeez. which is insane. Right. Because <laughs> So essentially, a basic win on the game gives you five caps. That is nothing compared to (laughs) 10,000. Every once in a while, you get the chance for a big win or a huge win. I forget their terms for it, but the big Mm -hmm. one is like 30 caps, and then the huge one is 50. I don't know if there's a level above those. Right. um, Because those are the ones I've seen. I think I've only seen the 30. Okay, so yeah, I've seen the 50, and I've gotten that both times that I've seen it, which I'm very happy about. (laughs) Um, But still, 50 is still nowhere near 10,000 caps. (laughs) So you can expect to be playing that a lot. I maybe next time I'll have the math done for like how many wins you need at the basic (laughs) level. Um, But it's a lot. 
Um, and so anyways, yeah, the break tapper game was added. A bunch of little things that are just like real nice quality of life updates. Like there are now balloons on the map. Um, what do you think of those? Oh, I like those a lot. I, I, I like especially how they didn't tell us anything about it. You just see the little exclamation mark at the bottom and you wonder, oh, what's going on? Then you just see a little balloon. You, I usually see two at a time. So you tap it and you just get a random item. And sometimes it's um, some of the rare items like the koi. So yeah. it's a nice way to, to build up inventory without really doing anything. I'm, did you get a koi yeah. out of that? Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten I've gotten some of the rare bugs, but I didn't think I, I didn't know you could get like those top tier ones. Right. So that's pretty awesome. Um yeah, that that was a true surprise cuz like you said, they didn't mention a single thing about that. So I was excited to yeah. see it. It's a nice little thing. The other thing that wasn't mentioned that they added was like these new level up animations mm -hmm. so whenever you level up one of your villagers you get a, your little camper and it goes from level 9 to level 10 or so and there's a little flag and you're like this is beautiful right <laughs> i love it um and then what else they you can put two rugs in your campsite now yes finally <laughs> I remember the episode where we were talking about that. We were like, yeah. I can't believe you can't do that. That's, <laughs> w what is this? It's ridiculous. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm i just excited because the game, every time they update it like this, it just feels more alive. Right. Right. And it just It's simpler, like easier to play, more, more convenient. Yeah. So, I don't know. I feel like people picked it up at first and were kind of disappointed, but now it's like, there's kind of a lot to it. Yeah. Unfortunately now also, if you're just barely picking it up, there's a lot that you've missed. Um, so I don't know if they're ever going to go back to those like gardening events or festive events or, you know, right. Um, so people will have the opportunity to get that stuff again, but I, I don't know. Only time will tell when the year rolls around. Right. I think, yeah, that's that's a good point. I think by the year, they might just repeat everything. Yeah. So it's pretty crazy. Um, so let me go through some more things that we can do. Um, you can ask 10 people at a time to help you out the, with the quarry. Um, I wanted to make a special note for this one because at first I was looking at the quarry and I was like, oh, you can click on ask me. And then you'll mm. ask them and you'll kind of load up. But I didn't realize I was unselecting them. Right, right. I, so, I, I'm right there with you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I originally unselected everybody and I was like, oh, I can't ask anybody. What's going on? <laughs> and then I was like, oh, they were already selected and you can just do 10 at a time. Right. That Perfect. That's all I need to do. <laughs> yeah, they, they made it super, super easy. Yeah, and I really like that that list is always organized by, like, who was on most recently. Right. So all of your friends who haven't played the game in 30-plus days are way at the bottom, and you don't even have to ask them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, it makes it super easy. I pretty much click on that button three times, ask thir yeah. the top 30 people on my list, and then I'm good to go. Right, right, right. <laughs> Yeah. The next thing was dressing up villagers. And that is, I, I don't know. I love it yeah. so far. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, who, who have you dressed up? Um, I'm blanking on the names. Oh, but it, it's my, my favorite villagers, like Alfonso. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I'm going with stripes. I'm, I'm giving everyone different uh, colors of stripes. Oh, hats. that's pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I've just been like, I kind of stopped dressing people up at first. Um, I think I did like three of them. I, I want to say I did Bob right away. I gave him all my oh, nice. OK Motors outfit. Oh. <laughs> and then I dressed up Goose in pretty much the ones that would give you like leaf tickets when you were done. Right. Um, and then who else did I do? I don't remember the last one, but then I just had the idea that I was like, oh, I just want to make everybody look like they're wearing a uniform or something. Right, so right. I've started <laughs> looking for stuff that's just the same. <laughs> um, 
I should probably craft more clothing and do it that way. But I've just been looking at the shops whenever they're around. Um, yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, so I haven't been crafting stuff. I should. I think I was just too busy trying to get all the new villagers. Right. Um, so I was crafting furniture. But now that I'm done with that, I'm going to be crafting a bunch of little outfits for my villagers. Yeah, yeah. It's it's yeah. really, really cool cool addition. And it's, it makes our campsites way more unique now. Yeah, and it gives you another way to level up your villagers. Yeah, that's true. Um, right. So whenever that, like, dress, uh, um, I think, what does it say? Like, dress me or I forget. Ch- what the change my that. outfit? Yeah, change my outfit. Whenever right. that's lit up in the pink lettering, you know you're going to get a couple experience right. points for your villagers. Um, but, yeah, it, it's super cool. It just gives you a, another way to just make the campsite feel alive. Yeah. Yep. And then, so another thing that happened is that they've added some new tasks for your villagers. And those are in the form of lost items and requests for flowers. Mm-hmm. And what I like about this one is that you've got like a classic, um, a classic from like New Leaf or, you know, even back in the GameCube where they're like, Oh, I let this person borrow my Game Boy and I'm hoping you can get it back for me. And then you go and you talk to them and they're like, oh, I lent it to this other person. (laughs) (laughs) And so that you're just on a wild goose chase for this Game Boy. But eventually you get it and you can return it to them, you know? Right. Um, So, yeah, this is kind of this is closer to the New Leaf style of Lost Item where Mm. you'll find like a book or something on the floor you pick it up and then you're like asking around the villagers and seeing who lost something right know? right that was pretty cool yeah so this you find a lost item um my first experience with it it was actually a request from peewee so i was just in my campsite mm. peewee said hey i lost something i think i was near the river when i saw it last And so I went over to the river and I actually fished it out. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it wasn't something that I just found on the ground. Oh, wow. (laughs) It it was something that I had to fish for because I was like, I looked around and I was like, huh, I'm not seeing anything. (laughs) And then I was like, just catching the fish casually because that's what I do whenever I'm in an area. (laughs) Um, And then... I just found a bottle and I was like, oh, <laughs> here it is. This is what Pee Wee's looking for. Um, and then after that, I kind of saw the other ones where like you found a book on the ground, you know? Right, right, right. Um, but yeah, what I like about it is like you can just find it on your own. Or if you start out in your campsite, they'll tell you about it, you know? Right, right. Um, my first time was just on my own. I was on the Bog Island and I just... I was looking at the palm trees and I was like, what is that blue bag? I I recognize it, but I recognize it from New Leaf. I think I know what this feature is. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. It's surprising. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So if you find it out there on your own, you'll pretty much just return to your camp and they'll be waiting for you. Right. (laughs) Um, And if they request it, they'll do the same thing. You'll find it. And then right when you get back to your camp, they'll be waiting for you. Right. I, I feel like, they're just like little kids yeah and your parents went to the store or something and they're like oh can you get me like pop tarts and then they come back and you're just waiting at the door and you're like did you bring me my pop tarts (laughs) (laughs) um so i think that's pretty cute yeah 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 (laughs) um so anyways i mentioned a little bit earlier that i've been busy crafting a bunch of stuff and we've gotten five new villagers into the game and were they i think they were like all cool except for octavian oh Um, okay i don't know maybe i'm trying to think if Dottie was but anyways the villagers are eugene which is a shoot what's the animal the Mm. eucalyptus tree ones (laughs) why can't i think of it no Uh, is it an anteater no, he's a, he's a koala. Oh, koala, yeah. <laughs> of course. I It slips my mind the moment I need it. Anyway, so Eugene's a little koala. He wears these sweet shades and a leather jacket. Yeah. Um, I feel like you can't change his clothing. 
because he's just <laughs> no, so cool. No, right. Like, like he's already reached the ultimate level of awesome. <laughs> and you can tell because he's wearing a, le- yeah. a leather jacket. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyways, uh, there's also Freya, who is a pink wolf. Mm-hmm. Um, Octavian, everyone's favorite octopus. Right. I don't think he is, actually. I think people really like <laughs> Marina now, right? Right. Who is like a pink octopus. Right. And then Zucker is pretty popular, too. There are only three octopi mm-hmm. in this game, which isn't very many. Right, right. <laughs> I, I do like Octavian. Yeah. Octavian's cool. He's a classic grumpy yeah. old man. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he's one of the hip characters, the new mm. um, essence. And then there's Fuchsia, who is a pink deer. Uh, Jackie was very confused. She was like, is this a dog? (laughs) (laughs) Um, I can... She doesn't look very much like an animal, I think. (laughs) I mean, she does look like an animal, but you just don't know what animal. (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) Um, But yeah, she's a deer. Um, And then there's Dottie, who is the black and white bunny. And Dottie's... I've always really liked yeah. Dottie. She lives in my town. <laughs> right, right. Um, well, not currently, but she was one of my early villagers in New Leaf. Um, and then after those characters, there was also another event which ended at this point just over the weekend mm-hmm. since we record this Sunday. I think it was yesterday the last yeah. day. Yesterday night, correct. Yeah, so Saturday was the last day. When you're listening to this, it's Tuesday, so it's over. (laughs) Um, But there was Crystal Furniture. And I think the one thing, it's really cool furniture. And I think a lot of us were like, oh, this would go really well with the ice set, you know? Right. But now it's spring, and (laughs) I feel like that furniture doesn't make sense anymore. Right, right, (laughs) right. Which is unfortunate. <laughs> right. um, maybe if they add, I don't know, some more like earthy type, like cave type of furniture, mm-hmm. like you're lost in a cave or I don't know. I don't know what they could yeah. do to change it up and make it, <laughs> but I've got ideas. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Just small ideas. I don't know. The cave's the only one. <laughs> um, so, yeah. What other types of updates have we seen? So they added a feature that is known as send a tune to um, add a local friend. Um, you know, when when you're both next to each other with your phones. I actually haven't looked into this. I want to look at least at a video or hopefully try it out. I think it would be really Animal Crossing-y. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think, I mean, I feel like everybody I've added since the only way to add people was through friend codes. Right. Um, everybody's been online um, even the people around me, I've only really added them through that like friend code thing. So now I'm just like, I need to convince somebody to download this game <laughs> and let me try out this feature because I want to know if you make like your own little town tune, right? And then that sends over to them, and I I love that, right? Yeah, <laughs> um, I think making a town a town tune is super cool. Um, I was about to cut myself off, but I was going to say, I just went over to like a friend's town in New Leaf and I was like, man, I keep forgetting people have different town tunes. Yeah. yeah that's, a, that's a, a staple. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's so, it's such a early concept of how you can personalize your town. Right. And yeah, so I really want to try the feature, but I just have to find that person right. <laughs> who I can convince to download the game <laughs> right. and play with me. <laughs> or, uh, but they also have to be like right in front of me because yeah. clearly this is like the if you're standing right next to them and don't want to have to type a code, here's an easier way right. to do it, <laughs> which makes it cool. Right. Um. So yeah, what else is going on? So. One of the biggest parts of the update, now we can finally customize the background in the um, the middle ground, they call it, but it's more like the foreground of our campsites. There's um, different options that we can, oh, we can also decorate or change the color of the wooden deck, which is like the main floor on the center of your campsite. Yeah. Um, it's funny because I saw, I think in a loading screen that was talking about placing different carpets. I noticed that like left side of your campsite 
in that picture didn't have a deck mm. or that ground. And I was like, huh, right. I wonder if that's going to be an option. I didn't mention it early enough because after the update, I noticed that, that it was an option. Right. And I was like, oh, man, I should have totally predicted it. I would have been <laughs> super cool. Everybody would have been right. like, man, how'd you know? <laughs> and I'm like, I I'm just a mind reader. <laughs> Um, but yeah, have you tried any of these new decorations yet? Yeah, definitely. So I went with the light brown wooden deck. I think most of us did on, on our Discord. And then <laughs> I went with the flowers on, on both the foreground and the background. Yeah, I actually went with the dark brown wooden deck oh, at first. Okay. I have both now, but I, I, I guess oh. I've always kind of preferred the dark look. Right, right, right. Um, and then I... I went ahead and I got the holiday lights. Today I was disappointed to walk outside and notice my holiday oh. lights were, <laughs> seemed completely out of place. <laughs> but also I low-key kind of like really liked it. Right. I was like, huh, you never see Christmas lights yeah. at this time. So it's pretty fun. Um, so I kind of liked it. But I did, uh, that did push me over to spend all my bells on the bamboo <laughs> right right <laughs> yeah i haven't gotten the flower one quite yet because i'm still trying to get some more leaf tickets mm -hmm. um i have enough but i kind of don't want to see my number fall back down to that 60 yeah right <laughs> point that i hit after the rover's garden thing so i'm right. hesitant to, <laughs> well um, after getting both uh flower options mine did i think i have like 80 now <laughs> oh yeah uh, so this is one thing i did want to mention so i paid off my loan the 150,000 mm -hmm. one for the camper and I expanded my camper again but essentially I had 700 bells left after I did Oof. that um eventually I got it back to 40,000 and now that I'm there I spent all my money on the bamboo background and the foreground slash middle ground whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. um I mostly spent it on the foreground just to see what it was like. And I've got to say, I'm not impressed. I think the the background is for sure worth it. Mm -hmm. But I think the foreground, it's like you could barely notice it, you know? Right. I agree with you completely. You have to go out of your way to see it. Yeah. I, th I, don't, I don't know why it would be i mean i get why it's an option but i don't think it should be as expensive as the backgrounds right. are right exactly it, especially because if you say that's an issue with the bamboo which is you know the tallest the, the easier to see and it's still hard to see so the other two are probably even worse yeah exactly so i i've seen the bamboo one and i'm like man you just see like a couple leaves yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's practically nothing right. i feel like i just spent 20,000 bells on that nothing <laughs> um oh yeah and i guess we didn't really mention the pricing but you have the holiday lights and the flower garden and those are both 150 leaf tickets mm -hmm. um and then you had the bamboo options which were both twenty thousand, and that's that's why i was disappointed i was like man this is the same price as the background Right. And it's just not worth it. Right, right. I agree. And, and you know, we, we called it um, a few or last episode or, or two episodes ago, we mentioned that it was very likely that Nintendo was going to implement features that use leaf tickets in different ways. And here we go with the decorations. Yeah. And I, I think personally, I like these kinds of leaf ticket purchases a lot better. Yes, um, like I didn't mind using leaf tickets on the KK slider chair or the Tom Nook chair, you know, um, because it was just like, that was the only way I could get it. And it right. was, you know, they had to lock some furniture behind leaf tickets. Right. Right. I, I'm surprised they haven't done more. Yeah, that's true. Which, uh, cause usually I feel like that's where they get you. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're like, oh yeah, here's this super cool furniture, but you need to pay money. <laughs> um, but the other thing is, like, the camper styles, I think those were fine. Like, have some that you pay for with money, some that you pay for with leaf tickets. Mm -hmm. 
those are perfectly cool. Um, and then these backgrounds, I think, are nice. I wish they would have added a couple more where it was only, like, bells, you know? Right, I agree. Um, I'm sure we'll see more in the future, but right now we have two that cost leaf tickets and one that cost bells. Mm -hmm. the, um, definitely the nice feature is that they let you see what it looks like before you go for it. Yeah, that's perfect. I was going to be very sad if you couldn't like preview right. it before and be like, yeah, that's what my camp needs to yeah. look like. <laughs> um, so that is a nice one. Um, I think they also did add s three new camper styles, which were like oh. customized like looks. Um, I forget what they were called, but they're pretty cool. I like the new styles. I think two of them were just bells and then one of them was the regular leaf ticket price. Right, right. right. Um, but yeah, I, I guess overall I'm okay with those types of leaf ticket barriers. Cause I'm like, I think DLC, a lot of people complain when it's like, oh, this is how you need to beat the game. You know, right. like you need to buy the DLC to beat the game. Whereas other people find more success by just doing aesthetics as they're paid for right, stuff. Right, right, right. And it, it's a good thing that there's leaf tickets and then there's also the bell option. And the bell one is not necessarily worse. It's just a different look, so you can go with what you want. Yeah, and then, I I mean, I've found plenty of bell options that I like better than leaf ticket options. Right, and right. Then, you know, sometimes you like the leaf ticket option better, and that's fine. You yeah, know? right. Um, we've been getting a lot of leaf tickets, so... Uh, especially since last time, like I said, I was down to 60 or so after the Rovers event. Mm -hmm. And then by the time I got through the Lottie garden event, I was up like 300 leaf tickets. So mm. the, the, they're definitely being pretty generous with them, especially I think since most people spent like all of theirs right, right. <laughs> to get everything from the Rover event. Right, right. Oh, and you yeah. know, I think I misread, but I thought we were going to be able to customize all the areas, at least at least the background of them. I think that would have been pretty nice. Maybe they, they might implement that in a future update. Yeah. You know, I think I was very surprised because I thought, like, you know how you can put the two amenities in the back? Mm -hmm. I thought maybe we would be able to, like, customize each separate background to the amenity. Oh, you know? nice. Right. Like, make one side the flower garden and then the other, like, the holiday lights type right. of look. Right. Um, but, yeah, uh, when you buy one, it's just, like, the whole background right. does that. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, yeah, I wonder what else they'll change as far as, like, being able to customize types of things. Mm -hmm. Um. Because I, I, I love this idea because I keep just thinking like this next Animal Crossing. All of my ideas just go straight to the next Animal Crossing. <laughs> um, so I'm like Animal Crossing Switch. I want to be able to change what the background of my town looks like. Right. You know, imagine. like do some like major landscaping projects where this place has like this crazy bamboo forest <laughs> right behind. You know what I mean? Right, right. I mean, um, it sounds a little crazy or too too out there, but if I could have fireworks on my sky all the time, I would do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. I think uh, you only get to see them every weekend in August, right? Right. right. So it's nice to have uh, just have them some other times. <laughs> I guess you see them on New Year's, right? Oh, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there are a couple other holidays that get them, but... Yeah, you don't see a lot of fireworks during other t parts of the year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It also seems, I guess, I don't know, growing up in Southern California with all the fires and everything, I'm like, fall's probably not the best time. Everything's so dry. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, yeah, so <laughs> I don't know. Right. But it's Animal Crossing. They don't have to worry about no. fires. <laughs> not yet, uh, at least. <laughs> yeah. Only the fires in our hearts <laughs> for the game. Um, but yeah, overall, I'd say the backgrounds are great. Go ahead, mm -hmm. spend your leaf tickets on those. Kind of probably skip the foreground decorations. Um, right. Like if you're having trouble picking what you want to decorate, I'd say make it easy. Just don't go with any of the foregrounds. Yeah, right. And, and get the backgrounds because that's where the magic happens. Right. 
because you can actually see it and enjoy it. Right. Yeah. So um, are there any other updates you wanted to talk about? Well, there's one that they mentioned, but I, I haven't noticed anything. Didn't they cha- They say there would be changes or improvements to the market box? I, you know, I've been looking, mm. I've been trying different things, and I haven't noticed anything unless it's going to be a minor update that just appears out of nowhere still. Yeah, I'm guessing because since we've started getting these updates, we haven't really gotten them all at once, you right, know? Right, right. Um, like the changing your backgrounds that we were just talking about, that wasn't in the initial wave, right. you know? Mm-hmm. So I'm assuming, yeah, it'll probably be a future thing. Um, I mm-hmm. don't know. If, if we're, I don't know, if they keep updating the game like they do it's probably gonna happen next week or right. later this week right exactly yeah yeah th- that should be exciting and then yeah. another strange one i believe that they they say there would be changes to gardening and the only one i've noticed is that you don't really see yourself walk into the garden anymore you see a loading screen it's it's short but it's it's just different <laughs> oh okay yeah like i said i haven't walked into my garden quite yet um though i do i should go and see what it looks like now that spring is around um but yeah maybe because i know a lot of people were experiencing this small little bug where the music in the garden would stop Hmm. and for a little while there was another bug where from the garden it would just boot you to the title screen right yes um i've i've actually experienced both of these um the music one's weird like the music just stops, mm-hmm. nothing else really happens, but you just don't get to listen to the little tune right. that plays in there. Um, and then the one that takes you to the title screen, um, I think they already kind of addressed that one by making the game save anytime you like clicked on a flower. Right. Um, and I mostly noticed that change because I remember when the garden first came out. I could click on a flower, but then really quickly click on another and I would change direction Mm. and pick that other flower instead. Right. Um, You can't do that anymore. So as soon as like you click a flower, it like commits to you're done (laughs) going to that one with that action. And, you know, Um, so I don't know. They probably just fixed some things up. So you it's a little less buggy. Right. While you're in there. Um, And then speaking of bugs, there was. I guess a pretty big one that was crashing people's games Mm -hmm. and they wouldn't load. Um, A couple of us actually did experience it. I've experienced, I experienced it. Mm -hmm. Um, I was on Android. um, And then at some point I tried to get the stuff from my like rewards box. Mm -hmm. Um, So I just like finished a couple Isabel quest things. And then I was trying to pick up the rewards and then it just kept trying it it just kept trying to load and then it would say oh want to retry loading like it wouldn't connect and i lost connection um and then i was like oh maybe i'll just reset the app i restarted i closed the app out Mm -hmm. restarted the game and then it wouldn't load at all oh it just kept having trouble connecting to the internet right or something Mm -hmm. so i yeah i couldn't get into the game and i was like uh maybe i have to uninstall and reinstall right (laughs) so i tried that it still didn't work and then i don't know just later in the day it worked again Hmm. yeah it was it's it, it was a weird crash right luckily i didn't run into that but i know for sure many of our discord people experience that on both android and iphone but Definitely, you know, they have addressed it for sure. Yeah, so now my game works fine. And yeah, hopefully other people who have experienced that, it's also been fixed. Um, And if they stopped playing because of that reason, hopefully (laughs) they check back and just try. Because I know I'm, I don't know, I I get frustrated when I'm trying to just enjoy something, but it won't let me. (laughs) Right, right. And sometimes you have limited time, so, you know, you just want to, do what you need to yeah um yeah so i don't know for, i just wanted to give an example but like splatoon um one and two i would always have like connection issues and i'm like man um i only play so many games a day <laughs> you know and 
Splatoon is one that kind of takes a, a bit of time, you know, you gotta, right. but also it's like so short, like if you're playing a ranked mode, it's like five minutes or turf mode, it's three. Right. And you're like, I just want to enjoy these five <laughs> minutes of game. And so eventually I did just get a wired connection, but right. yeah, uh, it sucks when stuff like that gets in the way of you just going like, I just really wanted to have yeah. something <laughs> nice in my life for three minutes, <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. So I get it. I get the frustration because <laughs> I feel it too. <laughs> Um, so yeah, did you want to go over some of the upcoming updates, even more updates right. and events coming to the game? Right, right. I love how we always talk about what's been updated and then what's coming. <laughs> yeah, so, it, it just keeps coming. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. So the next one, I think it's big. I, I like it a lot. We're going to get a fishing tournament, so Chip is going to be coming back. Yes, Chip. He's always like, he's such a weird character to me because he's just like, catch me fish. And then you give it to him and he just eats it in front of you. <laughs> right. So, yeah, he's always doing that. I I like this, too, because this is another one of those like classic features in mm -hmm. the game that's mm -hmm. making a comeback. And I, it makes me think of early in the podcast, um, I forget what episode we talked about it, but just like we thought about like all of the different Animal Crossing things that could happen, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so this is one of them. This is like a classic Animal Crossing event. The right. fishing tourneys have been around since the beginning of the game. Right, right. At least in North America. I don't know if that was like something that was added right from the japanese version or what but still <laughs> it's it's a staple fishing's huge <laughs> right right mm. Mm -hmm. so uh, and it's it's coming with um a special new fish um they may be it sounds like it's going to be exclusive to the tournament but even more exciting we're going to be able to see our records how big um or small the bugs in the fish that we catch have been yeah that's really cool um i I've always kind of wished this would be kept better track. Uh, I guess I want better track of these types of stats on right. Animal Crossing. Right. So it'd be, it, I'm excited to see like, <laughs> what's your biggest fish you've ever caught? What's the smallest fish you've ever caught? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah. And you mentioned kind of like, it, they might be like special new fish or unique fish to the thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think, we could see like fish that we haven't seen in the game so far. Mm -hmm. And I think so that because I remember reading an article that kind of talked with, they talked with the developers of the app and they were essentially just brainstorming ways to introduce new fish or bugs, you mm -hmm. know? Right. And this seems like, that's what they're doing with this game. Right. They're probably just introducing some temporary fish and bugs that you can only see during these tournaments or so. And yeah, I, I think we're just going to be able to see a bunch of cool new stuff. Yeah, yeah. This would be pretty exciting. Yeah. I I can't wait. <laughs> Especially, uh, I don't know. I like when things give you like new cool rewards to go for. Um in New Leaf, they added like all of the fish and bug furniture. Right. When you did these tournaments, and I was like, "That, that's awesome." <laughs> <laughs> and also, I wanted all the different trophies, so I'd try to get yes. third, second, yeah. or <laughs> first. Right. Um, I feel like second was the hardest for me to get, mm. even though I imagine it should be third. <laughs> I don't <laughs> right. know, but maybe that's why second was the hardest because I thought I would get second mm. pretty easy by just getting a slightly smaller fish <laughs> than what was in first um right but yeah that's a whole that's a new leaf discussion but <laughs> yeah like uh, like we've been saying updates and updates coming to pocket camp i'm sure we'll always have plenty to say about that game <laughs> right um but let's go ahead and take it through back to new leaf um so, Sergio, recently I got another copy of New Leaf. <laughs> and this one, I just downloaded it on the eShop. I used some My Nintendo points and got it for like $16. Nice. So, that that is such a steal yeah. for this game because <laughs> the game is truly worth yeah. so much. Oh my <laughs> it's a huge game, especially with the Welcome Amiibo update. Right. But, anyways. 
Um, we've talked about this a lot. We, I've had the same town since June 13th, 2009. Was that really it? No, it was 2013, right? Right, June 9th, 2013. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sorry. I went back <laughs> way too far on that right. one. <laughs> um, so 2013, almost five years ago, and I was like, you know what? I've had the same town and I want a new one, but I'm not going to get rid of this town, so oh, I'm no. going to need a new copy of the game. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so since then, I've gotten a new copy, and I guess I wanted to take the time and talk about the three things that I'm changing in this New Leaf playthrough, and you have also made three things that you would change if you were to play the game again. Right. Um I don't know if you're going to, but <laughs> <laughs> because I know you you have already had like other towns, right, right? Right, right. Yeah. Did you have one extra town or two? I had two. <laughs> yeah, I, I had a it was um, two. right, right. I had one that was my main second town, and then for a little while I had an even extra. <laughs> yeah, an extra and an extra. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the three things that I would want to. Uh, slash I am changing in this playthrough. Um, what, so I've had two regrets about my town that I started, my original town. Mm -hmm. The first regret was that I play, uh, the, and this is at the very beginning of the game. These two regrets are literally oh. the first, two <laughs> of the first decisions you make in Animal Crossing, and they've haunted me since that moment. <laughs> um so anyways, the first one was deciding to have my beach on the right side of the map. Mm -hmm. And it, this is very small detail, but if your beach is on the right side of the map, on Main Street, your museum will be on the left side of town, of the, of the Main Street. Right. If your beach is on the left side of the map, your museum will be on the right side of Main Street. So there are two reasons why this matters to me. <laughs> because this is it's ridiculous that this matters, but it matters so much to me. <laughs> and those two reasons are the first one, it's super cute when the museum's on the right side of your town. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen both options, but for me, having the museum on the right of Main Street is by far the cutest option. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> because you get the little lake with the trees and stuff right between the museum and Kicks. Right. And I really love that aesthetic. <laughs> that is beautiful. <laughs> um, the second reason is the, the placement of the museum on the right is just overall more convenient in Main Street, mm -hmm. um, there's not if your museum is on the left, that's essentially the only reason to go that far to the left side of Main Street. Mm -hmm. um, the only other things there are the fortune teller, which if you're not too worried about, I guess, the luck you have in a day, right. fortune teller is not too important. Right. There's the photo booth thing, mm -hmm. which... I think people use on the first day to get their picture for their pass. And then that's about it. <laughs> maybe they use it again to, right. once they finally look how they want to look. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, that those are the two <laughs> things on the far left side of the main street. And I'm like, that's not worth it. Whereas the right <laughs> side, the far right is kicks shop, which is like a staple that you want to visit daily. Right. You know? Right. And so you just have to go a couple steps more to the right and you're at the museum. Mm -hmm. So overall, museum on the right side. Yeah, it's far it, just, superior. it just fits there. It goes there perfectly. Yeah. And so th that's the first thing I fixed. I've placed my... <laughs> I've picked a town where the beach is on the left and my museum is on the right. So I'm already at a great playthrough. Um, the second thing that's haunted me is my house placement. And when I started the game, I was like, oh, cool. I want to live like near my river, kind of have that be like my backyard mm. area, you know? So I, I'm pretty far south on my town near the beach. 
right right below the river. Mm-hmm. Um, what I didn't know was that I wouldn't be able to plant the cedar saplings, so the pine trees that mm. grow. Right. They don't grow on the southern half of the map. Right. So this whole time I was like, oh, I can't wait to <laughs> plant some pine trees around my home. And then I try it and I'm like, why are they all dying? Right. <laughs> and then I ran a bunch of experiments and I just found out like there's a point where you get too far south and the pine trees won't grow mm. on that half of the map anymore. Um, I don't know why they do that. Uh, I wonder if it's some sort of scientific explanation. Nah, I don't know. I'm just like, <laughs> we don't need science in Animal Crossing. <laughs> we're we're speaking to animals. <laughs> they can't talk. <laughs> I want to be able to grow trees on the southern part of my map. <laughs> and so, so I am as far north as you can get. Oh, <laughs> and now. Um, yeah, I've I've essentially I'm by like the train tracks pretty right. far north. Right. Um, I've left a little space so I could plant some trees behind my home, okay. because right. like I said, I want to be surrounded by pine trees. Nice. And it's not gonna work if I can't be surrounded. And I'm still <laughs> like kind of in front of a pond because I do like the water feature. Yeah. Oh yeah. And funny enough, I'm also near the beach, like the cliff mm. near mm-hmm. the beach is very close to my home and there's a little ramp down to it so oh, it sounds so perfect yeah so it, it's a prime location <laughs> and so i fixed that i'm ready to plant my pine trees nice. around my home so those two things have haunted me <laughs> for my entire playthrough <laughs> um well not my entire playthrough of course i had to f- finally realize that i just couldn't plant mm. Mm-hmm. pine trees <laughs> and then i went to somebody else's town and i was like oh my gosh the museum on the right is so much <laughs> cuter <laughs> um so these are the little things that keep me up at night on animal <laughs> crossing finally the third thing that i'm changing in my playthrough is i'm not gonna fully upgrade my home um uh I feel like that's always the main goal in Animal Crossing, you know? Right, for sure. But I think once you have the biggest home, the one disappointing thing about it is, like, you can't go back to having smaller rooms Mm -hmm. or removing a room, you know? Right. So I I really hope they address this in the new game because I'd like to... Because, you know, usually there's something nice that you get when you pay off your house. Um, For example... Well, I, I don't remember what you get in this one, but the GameCube one, if you paid off your house, you'd get like a golden statue of your character, mm-hmm. you know? Um, I'm not sure if it was actually your character. All the characters just kind of look <laughs> the same. Right. Um, and there's not too much customization to them. But I always thought that was really cool, you know? Um, so I think it's still cool to have that incentive of like upgrading your house all the way and being done with it. Right. But then it'd just be nice to go back to like, having a small room again you know um because i've gone to other people's places and i'm like oh man you have like this medium-sized room that's pretty awesome this small bathroom which is nice and yeah i think they're just like a lot of decorative options Mm -hmm. when you have a different space to work with you know right right so yeah those those are the three main main things that i've been changing in this playthrough Nice. Uh, um, so, so what would you change if you were to play again for the fourth <laughs> time? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, for sure, the, the the one that gets me the most, or that um, I remember the most, that I, I wish I hadn't. I, I wish I hadn't focused so much on you know maximizing my bells so early on. Um, you know, I had my second town, and in every third day, I would harvest all the perfect cherries out of it. And I would just leave them out front in the tracks, <laughs> ready for yeah. whenever a perfect sale would happen. And then, <laughs> do, do you do you use the turnip uh, patterns? Um, you mean like uh, predicting like if you're gonna have a spike in turnip prices? Right. Right. Um, yeah, I did for a little bit. Mostly, I would just end up finding somebody on like Bell Tree forums who had a big turnip day. 
<laughs> right, right. So, I, I mean, I did that for sure. I, I follow my patterns and then I would keep in touch with friends also to to just go all out and, <laughs> and make a lot of money. And, and to, to some extent, it's nice, but I think I did it way too quickly. And, and I feel like I would have played even a lot more of the game more than I already did if, if I yeah. hadn't focused so much on, on that. And, and I had another goal, you know, to keep me going, which was to, to get the, the, I think it's a third level batch for having, I think a hundred thousand bells or a hundred million. Yeah. I think it was actually a hundred million. Right. Right. Yeah. Which is insane. I've yeah. never had that much money in the game. <laughs> right. Um, I'm, I, Though I've always wanted to get to like a million just to get that ABD for your home. Oh yes, that's that's yeah. a must. <laughs> yeah, so I maybe one day I'll make that a goal. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I totally get you with like because bells having tons of them really makes the game like kind of just go quicker. Mm -hmm. Um, you could buy everything in the store all at once every single day of your life. <laughs> yeah, even at Gracie's. <laughs> yeah which is insane yeah <laughs> um her stuff is so expensive <laughs> right um but i mean it's nice to have it all but it's also nice to be like man i totally didn't get enough to get that this year i'm mm -hmm. gonna have to wait till next year <laughs> yeah that's you know that's perfectly fine in animal crossing yeah because <laughs> yeah animal crossing's the slow game it's the one where you really have to put some time into it and then eventually you're there a year later and you're like man i've really made it <laughs> <laughs> right yeah so another thing and I, I mentioned this on the podcast that i wanted my town to be by the beach so that i would have to uh, basically to, to play the game more when i wanted to visit main street or the train tracks you know since it's <laughs> further down you have to play you spend more time walking so that was perfect but I wish my retail hadn't been so farther south as well. Um, my main reason is I wanted when people visited to when there was a sale at retail or when they wanted to sell turnips, I didn't want them to have to walk so much from the train tracks down to my retail. I wish it was uh, further north just so it was easier. Right. That's totally true. I, 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 at first, I didn't really care where my retail was. And I think eventually I saw people make that argument. And I was like, that's a really good point. Mm -hmm. um, it's just super convenient to have it closer up north. Also, my original town idea, um, if anybody, maybe we should put our dream codes up or something eventually. But mm -hmm. my town, I kind of placed all of like the staple buildings at the top. Mm -hmm. So I had like the coffee shop, the police station, um, pretty much just things that stayed there forever mm -hmm. up there, like the Resetti Center. Right. <laughs> um, and I would have liked to have like the retail up there as well. And I don't know, maybe Town Hall too, you know? So it felt like a little Main Street below Main Street. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Um, in my town... Oh, the only things down there are me and retail. <laughs> yeah. Um, in my town, pretty much everything is south in my town. I've got mm. I've got my home, retail, and um, the, shoot, the mayor office. Why mm -hmm. can't, I, I don't know. Town hall? <laughs> um, yeah, town hall. That's the one. Um, and then in my new town, town hall is kind of in the middle um, my tree is pretty far south, which is pretty cool. I save a lot of room for mm -hmm. a lot of things. But my home's in, up north. Retail is pretty far north now, pretty close to the top. Nice. Um, but yeah, I've gotten a, a new layout, which is pretty fun to work with. <laughs> right. And mm -hmm. then my third regret, this is definitely a regret because I did neglect this feature a lot, was the Dream Suite in, with Luna. Um, the, way, the way I did it, I mean, I think I got the bronze batch for this. and But I would do it in, in big batches. I would spend maybe one morning just going to different dreams. And I think it would have been better if I had done one, maybe two per day. I think it would have been just more, more interesting, more things to do daily in Animal Crossing. Yeah. You know, I think I feel the same. Uh, as you with this one and I think it's because it kind of takes a long time to get to a, another town through the dream suite you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um 
I think the vibe of the place is very like, you know, what's her name is very dreamy and keeps it like slow and soothing. Right. Right. You know, uh, and I think once you're finally out of town, you've spent, I don't know, five minutes to get there. Right. <laughs> it feel it feels like a long time. Right. And then you get to a town and a, a lot of the times the random ones are a bit disappointing. <laughs> Um, and you're just like, oh man, this is a town that I feel like they just started and haven't gotten to play too much, you know, right? right. or because, you know, you really, the big thing is you want to go see a place that has all of these really cool public works projects and ideas right. going on, you know? Right. Um, so I don't know. I, I don't know if, if or how they could like fix that system to make it a little bit more interesting, but I think. Right. I did the same thing where I was like, okay, today I'm going to go to a bunch of dreams. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas, yeah, I think it would work out better if you did like one or two a day. I'd probably do a couple a day mm-hmm. and then be like, cool, I've spent a good, I don't know, 20 minutes on this. <laughs> right, right. But. And it's a nice feature. I mean, they should definitely keep it for the next game. But like you said, just um, stream it. Just make it much faster. Yeah. I think that's the one thing it needs. It just needs to be a quicker interface right. to actually use the Dream Suite. Right. Because, cause, you know, it. I don't know. It's time consuming. Because once you find, like, a pretty good town, you spend a lot of time looking through a lot of yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Because there, there's a lot to a town. Like, it's a big space. And you want to see, like, what villagers they have, what they've done with the place. You can see all of the people's homes and how they decorated. And when you find that person who has, like, four different save files on their town and they all have huge houses, you know, you're looking through <laughs> all of them. Right. So, yeah, I think it just needs to be faster to get to the dreams. Um, so yeah, I guess that covers it for our three things. I did want to talk about like a couple odd things really quickly that I've noticed. For <laughs> one, I've, I've gone fishing and I caught a boot and this was the first time I ever had this idea, but I was like, why can't I wear this boot? <laughs> I just want to put it on my feet. Right. <laughs> it's a pretty nice boot. <laughs> and I'm sure this person really misses the boot that they they lost, and I'd love for them to know that I found it, and it's, and get, it's it. <laughs> yeah, it's getting some good use. Um, so yeah, maybe the next game, if you get two boots, you can mix and match, and yeah. <laughs> g- get your own collection of footwear from the ocean <laughs> or the rivers. Um, the other thing I noticed is somebody in City Hall, probably Mayor Tortimer, <laughs> approved of building a museum with nothing to put in it. Right. Like they had these ideas uh, that uh, clearly they had the ideas because they make like <laughs> the aquarium, they make the fossil room, they make the bug room and the art, but there's nothing there. Right. And I'm just like, I'm amazed that. They were like, you know what? Let's just go ahead and build it. We'll fill it in later. <laughs> yeah, they, they put way too much hope on you. <laughs> yeah. And and so I'm also like looking for one of my villagers and I'm like, they're probably in the museum <laughs> and it's empty. <laughs> and what do you know? I find them in the museum and it's empty. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so I love that they just made this place and people are using it but also not using it at all. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, you know, they should contribute too. Yeah, they they should. Though <laughs> I actually, I, I do remember having Animal Crossing on GameCube and sharing my, like, town and being slightly upset when my brother or my friend would donate something. Oh, yes, yes. And I'd be like, man, I just I wanted no, all the credit. <laughs> <laughs> I want to donate the things. No, you don't do that. <laughs> yeah, don't touch this feature it's for me <laughs> right yeah so yeah those are the two little things that i've noticed in this playthrough <laughs> that i just never really thought about right right mm-hmm. oh I, I just did i had one quick mention too because it always cracks me up whenever i see it um in, in amiibo festival you know how <laughs> whenever you land on a space there's a little 
uh, the event that goes on uh, for the character that you're playing as. In yeah. I'm always I'm always playing as KK Slider, so it cracks me up that he he's super into laundry and ironing his shirts, <laughs> uh, because you know really he doesn't really wear anything. If anything, he wears a cap when he's DJ KK. But mm-hmm. you get this random events and he's like, oh, I'm done with my laundry for the week. That took a while, and I'm like. DJ, you only wear a cap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder if they'll ever address that he's kind of a nudist. <laughs> <laughs> right. He's like, I'm wearing my guitar. That's the only clothes <laughs> I need. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty funny. Yeah. I, I low-key really want to play Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival, like, at least once a month now, hmm. and try each board. Um or oh, at yeah. least like each month. So right. right now it's February. Maybe I'll do a little let's play of that. Play by myself with four different <laughs> amiibo. <laughs> right. And, you know, just see at least once a month, see all the different boards. Right. Slash, I should show people like this little feature that mm. not a lot of people talk about about with Amiibo Festival. Mm-hmm. Because... Not a lot of people really played Amiibo Festival, <laughs> right. let alone played it for very long. So, <laughs> um, anyway, so you're talking about KK, and let let's go ahead and get into question time because KK is definitely related to this question. But, anyways, <laughs> this question was submitted by Dragon. Um, I did a little call out for patrons to ask us some questions on Patreon. Um, of course, Animal Crossing related. I didn't specify because this is an animal crossing podcast but anyways he said hi this is your friendly neighborhood dragon i'd like to hear a more in-depth discussion of who your favorite non-villager animals are and why yes this means i want to hear sergio talk more in depth about why he loves kk (laughs) um so yeah we're gonna try to keep this one short (laughs) just kidding it's gonna take a bit um So I guess, did you want to go first? No, you can go ahead. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because I I have some specific things to say with KK because (laughs) he used to be my favorite Mm. and we'll we'll talk about why he isn't anymore. (laughs) Um, But anyways, so I, it took me a while to come up with my new favorite, Mm -hmm. but I finally did, and I feel like I'm cheating because <laughs> they're kind of a duo, and they go together. Right. They're not Timmy and Tommy, though. <laughs> <laughs> they are Reese and Cyrus, the brand new alpaca, alpaca characters. Well, they're not brand new anymore. It's been <laughs> four years, Nintendo. Right. Give us a new game. Um <laughs> So Reese and Cyrus are alpaca characters introduced in New Leaf, and they run their show, their shop retail. And I think the more I thought about it, I was like, you know what? This makes a lot of sense for mm. me. And I think it's mostly because Jackie and I, um, we have gotten pretty interested in reducing our waste, like in real life. Mm-hmm. Um, so... You know, people typically think about, like, recycling or something like that. But the more, uh, I guess, the more important aspects of recycling, because there's a three-step process, it is reduce, reuse, and recycle, right? Mm. And so we've been more focused on reducing our waste and reusing things a lot. So this means we're trying to visit a lot of thrift stores for, like, clothes and furniture and Mm. then also donating whatever we're not using anymore and, you know, kind of living more minimally, I guess. Right, right. And so I think Reese and Cyrus with their shop really capture that idea for me. Mm -hmm. And so like their entire store is like based on like these concepts, you know? So essentially they run like a consignment shop, which Mm -hmm. is not exactly like a thrift shop. It, It sort of is, but the main difference is people put their own items there and sell it pretty much on their own. Right. 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 And then they'll visit the consignment shop again and, you know, pick up money if their items sold. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's how their shop works. Like they have all of these little display areas, people put their furniture there and others can buy it. Um, And so 
that that for us is like pretty important i guess in our lifestyle because we like going to thrift stores for different furniture and things Mm -hmm. um or looking at like craigslist um or what whatever like online kind of storefront where people are like we have this like couch i'm actually sitting on a couch that we got (laughs) through like that type of thing it's a Mm pull-out couch um but yeah, I, I think that really matters to me. And then the other thing is like Cyrus, his whole job is just like essentially like reupholstery and like customizing furniture and everything. And um, Jackie and I are thinking, well, we've been like hoping to reupholster a couch that mm-hmm. we have. Um, she's had it for a long time. It's a great couch. She loves it. And instead of getting rid of it because like it's old or whatever, we could just reupholster it and make it pretty much like a brand new couch, you know? Right, right, right. And so I think they they just kind of like hold things that we value in real life uh, of just like, you know, being able to reuse things or like if you're not using something anymore, giving it life in right. another home where it'll be loved and stuff yeah. like that. Right, right. Um. So yeah, also they're both married and we're married. So I thought it was cute. <laughs> right. <laughs> they have an adorable relationship. Um, Cyrus is like that super protective kind of, he kind of <laughs> makes me think of like a greaser kind of <laughs> dude who's like settled down. He's already, he's done his time with the mob or the mafia, <laughs> gotten out of that business and has like realigned his life to, <laughs> you know, just customize furniture for people. <laughs> And then Reese is just like, I don't know. She's she's awesome. She's oh, <laughs> running yeah. that shop. Super nice. Real right? go-getter. Super nice to everybody around, you know. Mm-hmm. The, that person who takes that, like, thick-skinned guy out of the <laughs> – off of the streets <laughs> and turns him into a man. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, no, I – yeah, as I thought about it more, I was just like, yeah, th- this makes sense for me. I think it captures a lot of like what I care care about in life, you know, and just value. And yeah. it, it's also showing people uh, that like this this is an option for stuff. Like, yeah, I think we see a lot of things that are just like thrown into garbage cans and you know, essentially never seen, and we're just filling up landfills with stuff. Right. Right. <laughs> um, right. But, yeah, I think if people want to look more into that type of lifestyle, just look at Reese and Cyrus, start looking at, you know, <laughs> how they do things. And it's pretty cool. Um, but, yeah, like I said, this was like a long journey for me to just come to, like, the realization that, yeah, right. they f- are for sure have to be my favorite characters. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, so I do have to make some honorable mentions. Um the first one, Tortimer. I, I feel like Tortimer is just like classic Animal Crossing character. Like you first meet him in the GameCube version and he's like, w- who's your favorite in your family? <laughs> and if you say your grandpa, he'll totally love you. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, and then if you say anything else, he's like, oh, yeah, they're they're all right, I guess. <laughs> Grandpas are where it's at, though. <laughs> um but the one thing that's sad to me with Tortimer is, like, he's this old turtle guy. And he's, like, the only turtle in the game. Yeah. Uh, where are the other turtles? <laughs> is their species just going to die out with him? <laughs> Which is sad to think about. And I'm, right. like... And, and as I think about it more, I'm just, like, I want so badly to have turtles in my, can- or in yeah. my town. See... No, this is a big moment for me. This is the first time I referred to <laughs> my town as my campsite. Right. Or almost did. Huh? I've been trying to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyways, yeah. Uh, turtle villagers. Mm. Add them, please. Yes. <laughs> um, another honorable mention, Shrunk. I really like that he's like a failed comedian. <laughs> right. <laughs> and still just like a really... He really values the arts and everything, and I like that about him in this game because he opens Club LOL, you know? Right. And he's just like, I want to give, you know, kids some place where they can express themselves, see some music, have some fun. Right. And that's another thing that's very important in my life. So I'm like, yes, expression Mm. through art, (laughs) super great. Um, The other I like, Brewster. 
which is funny because I don't drink coffee at all, Mm -hmm. but I just love the character a lot. I think Brewster is a cool guy to just see at the coffee shop. He serves you a drink and then he's really into gyroids. Yeah. (laughs) um, They kind of brought it back a little bit in New Leaf because he made his own little Brewster gyroids. Right. Um, which are adorable. They're like the best gyroids in the game, <laughs> for sure. Right, right. Um, you know, but I, I think it's like a rank that, oh, I'm friends with Brewster, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's super cool. Because um, that's one of the harder relationships to build yeah, yeah. in the game. <laughs> which is, it's it's an accomplishment to do yeah. that. Um, and then in City Folk, I think he would collect your gyroids, too. Like, it kind of gave you some storage space so you can hold on to all the gyroids that you got. Oh, I don't remember. Um, this was a very hard thing to get to as well. Because, like I said, that's a pretty mm. hard relationship to build. But eventually, right. <laughs> I think if you walk down there and you have, like, a gyroid in your pocket, he'll notice it. And he'll oh. be like, oh, I really like gyroids. I'm a collector <laughs> kind of thing. And then you'll get, like, a special storage space. Like, he'll hold on to all your gyroids oh, for you. Oh, wow. And so you never have to get rid of them. Right. Um, you just take them down and he'll hold on to them. He'll, I think he only keeps like one of each. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. But essentially you can go back to him and ask for one back. And oh, yeah, nice. Yeah. So little little rare thing you can do. <laughs> um, the other one, another honorable mention, Lyle. Uh, and what I like about Lyle is like he went from like sleazy – insurance salesman but he totally keeps that attitude and (laughs) is like the head of happy home academy or whatever right um i always think that's pretty funny i like his his dialogue yeah whenever he speaks (laughs) and then the last one is kicks because i love that little guy the little skunk yeah he started out as a shoe shine boy yeah and eventually saved up enough to open up (laughs) his own store very cool I love that little go-getter attitude that yeah, he's right. got. Success story. Yep. So those, <laughs> those are my little honorable mentions. Um, yeah. Nice. <laughs> so let's get to it, Sergio. You've got a lot to say, <laughs> I'm sure. So. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, I definitely... I do refer to myself as the number one KK Slider fan, and I think I back <laughs> it up. <laughs> I think you do. Yeah. So, you know, first and foremost... Um, KK Slider, you know, he's the he's the embodiment of freedom. He, you know, he writes his songs. He he doesn't go by trends. He, I mean, at least before he used to play wherever he wanted or wherever he could. He, I think he's he's um, you know, it's been a hard life or it's been a um, it's been a challenging road to get where he is now. But for sure, he's all about freedom and. You know, to to get into into my personal life a little bit, I do yearn for freedom still. Um, I live with my parents, so he, in a way, he really does inspire me. You know, to hopefully eventually get my own place, and I did for a while actually. And even then, you know, Cake is Lighter just reminded me that yes, I did it, <laughs> and now he reminds me that I can do it again. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I I really like also that in Animal Crossing One or uh, Population Growing, whenever you would go listen to his music, it was just you, him, and the music. Everything would go dark, and you know the camera would just spin around you and him. It just made the moment like really really special. Of course, not to mention he is the very first character that you see and that he introduces you to the world of Animal Crossing. You know, at least in in the first game. Mm-hmm. And and also in Pocket Camp, which I thought was a really awesome throwback to to population growing. Yeah, I've got to say, um, th- those first moments of like going into Animal Crossing and meeting this just this dog, just playing <laughs> guitar and saying like, "Hey, man, this is like a pretty cool thing that you're doing." <laughs> and I totally, I totally get that, like that sense of freedom that you're talking about because like that's his whole thing he's like yeah so you're finally off going to your own place in the world like this right. is this is what we're here for this right. is this is your own place that you can live in and do your thing you know right right um yeah and and also the population growing thing that blew my mind because i was playing 
um, mm. just a random Saturday night. And then I run by my train station and I'm like, whoa, <laughs> there's a dog here. <laughs> He's the guy I met when I first came here. Right. And so I talked to him and he played DJ Tech or KK Techno Pop. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, this, this is cool. This is yeah. pretty awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, so I totally get that. Right. And then, I mean, I'm sure you did like I did. It became a ritual every Saturday at eight, at eight for sure, <laughs> on the dot. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Because then you'd get that sweet bootleg. Yeah. You'd flip it into your pockets and you'd be like, <laughs> go bump this on your stereo system at home. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Which is always awesome. Yeah. 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 So, you know, KK is lighter. He, he's really cool and he knows it. I, I think he just, he, he owns his coolness. <laughs> yeah, he he's definitely one of those guys who's just like, man, I'm just doing my thing. Yeah. And I think it's totally cool that you're doing your thing. <laughs> so, yeah, I'd say he knows. He knows right, how right. to live it up. <laughs> <laughs> and And I do whistle a lot on my own, just different tunes, but for sure, when I'm listening to his songs, I whistle along and we we harmonize pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. But um, going back to you mentioning that he used to be your favorite character, non villager character. And I know we discussed the reason why, because you believe that he's a bit of a sellout now that he sells his, or it seems like he sells his songs over um, with Timmy and Tommy, right? <laughs> yeah um so yeah he definitely used to be my favorite character and then what i liked about him because i don't know at the time i first started playing animal crossing i was just in high school learning to play guitar trying to be like in a band or something you know with some friends right and i always liked his attitude of like don't let those industry fat cats tell you what to <laughs> listen to you just do you. And what's funny about that is like where I grew up, it, it was like a little mountain town. We didn't really get cell service or radio signals. <laughs> um, so I don't know. There were like a couple radio stations that would come through and they were essentially like news and weather ones. <laughs> and, and so right. I feel like the music I found was always like through the Internet and everything. Right. So I was like, oh, man, this guy's like super supportive of me <laughs> having my own tastes in music, you know? <laughs> right, right. right. Um, so I like that he was like, man, don't don't be a part of the system. The system is broke. <laughs> <laughs> and so when it came to New Leaf, I was kind of like surprised to see those KK records on store shelves, you know? Right. Because... I don't know. It just felt like his character didn't really go for that, you know? Right. I felt like the cool thing about him was like the do-it-yourself kind of avoid the typical com- commercialized channels of releasing your music and just like, you know, give it to the people right in front of them. Mm-hmm. Like, give uh, give it to the people who show up to the shows, you know? Right, who really right, right. appreciate the art that's going on. <laughs> and right. so, I don't know, seeing it on the store shelves kind of like broke it a little for me, mm-hmm. I think. Um, I mean, I'm sure he's KK Slider. I'm sure he's like got his own record label now <laughs> <laughs> um, that he started, you know, he's not. And he's trying to give other animals the chance to, you know, play music and do their thing. Right. Um so I don't know. I get. Uh, I'm sure he's gone about it, doing it the right way, but I think just initially it threw me off. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. No, for sure. I I get it. I get it. And then, you know, there's also DJ KK. In, I I I I'm. I guess I'm stuck thinking of them as two different characters, which is, <laughs> you know, not right. Um, it's KK's lighter, and then DJ KK is just another persona. So. I sort of, I need to remember (laughs) to keep that in mind. Yeah. And yeah, I think that I was also torn about at first too. I was like, oh man, now he's like (laughs) DJing on the side. Right. (laughs) And 
I don't know. I don't know who he is anymore. <laughs> right, right. I was um, just trying to uh, trying to figure it out. Right. You know? I, maybe he is too, because you know when he goes for coffee over at Brewster's in New Leaf, he is DJ KK. I guess he is KK Slider less now because it's it's only for Saturdays. Mm -hmm. But maybe he's just saving the best for the special moments. Yeah. And I don't know, I, I guess I, I do appreciate that aspect of him, you know, where he's like remembering where he came from. And I have to recognize that mm. as a musician, um, you know, people's tastes change, their music changes. And maybe this is just like his, I don't know, hundredth album. And he's like, man, I've been doing the acoustic thing for a long time. <laughs> I really want to do something different, you know? Right. Right. And so, like, I can totally get that where right. he's like, he, he's just wanting to spread his wings, do some different things. Because, you know, his the the bootlegs that he always gave you, like those were more produced than his acoustic show, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. Like they've got <laughs> some different sounds going to right. uh, through it. And he probably did that on his own on GarageBand on right. his laptop. <laughs> <laughs> so... So, yeah, he's still a very cool character. Um, I still like him a lot. And, yeah, I think just initially, it, it was that first playthrough of the game four years ago where I was less understanding <laughs> <laughs> and more like, man, what a sellout. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. But, you know, um, just keeping his, his Saturday evening shows, I think it shows that, he he still cares for the classics, for his upbringing, and it's sort of like his vintage side in a way. Yeah, yeah, and I do think it's cool. Like I feel like he's a probably Shrunk's partner, and and just getting <laughs> giving the animals some cool place where they can go Saturday night or or any night of any the week, night, right. and and you know just dance to some music, right? <laughs> Get down on the dance floor. <laughs> Well, I, I was so stoked when in New Leaf, you know, my, my first visit to him, like, oh, cool, I got my song. And then he asked me, do you want another? And I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? I can just stay here and listen to you for four hours? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because at first you would get like that one jam and then he wouldn't really, you know, give you any more. But right. now he's like, yeah. I won't give you the song, but I'll let you listen to it. Right, right. <laughs> live, which I don't know. I've always kind of like preferred live music anyway. So yes, right. I think th <laughs> that's the way to listen to it, you know? Right. Because you get to see it in the moment, see the emotions and everything. Um, right. So for, for many Saturdays after New Leaf came out, uh, that was my thing. I would pr plug in my 3DS to my speakers and I would just be in heaven. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Hearing, yeah, I bet you have nice speakers too. I know you mentioned <laughs> right. a lot about your headphones and everything, and I'm right. just like, you probably have some pretty good sound equipment to hear things on. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, which is cool. Um, so yeah, did you have anything else to say about your love for KK? No, no. I mean, that's it, and and it will continue forever. <laughs> yeah. If I if I had any. Honorable mentions, I think, it would, I mean, I like a lot of characters, but if there's one that sticks out as well, it would be Pascal. I, I really like his, his attitude and his his advice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was very close to my honorable mentions list. So was Harriet at the hair salon. I don't know. I've always liked Shampoodle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I yeah. love that song. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You get honorable, honorable mentions. <laughs> um, anyway, so... Last thing we're going to talk about, because this is already going forever, <laughs> um, discussion time. So we had a couple of quick things to talk about, but I have a friend who asked me some questions and they said, do you think that the constant updates for Pocket Camp, do they make you worried about what they're bringing to the Switch version? And for me, I guess I... Hmm, now that I'm thinking about it more, maybe I am a little worried. <laughs> I got, uh, at first I was saying I'm not worried because I think every new idea in Animal Crossing is another great idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just like the, uh, that they're bringing more to the game. So um, 
like we talked about today, the backgrounds. I right. love that. I think that's mm-hmm. a pretty awesome idea. It'd be really cool to customize your own town with different backgrounds and give it like a really unique look, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Uh, I guess what I would be worried about is like not seeing really cool ideas make it into the game, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, for example, like I've gotten pretty drawn to the idea of driving myself to my town in my own camper. Right. And so I kind of want to see a camper yeah, in the yeah. next mm-hmm. game because <laughs> I think it's really cool. And you can customize it and make it look how you want on the outside, put different furniture on the inside. Um, I think it's cool. So I guess my one worry with the updates is like not seeing updates that you think are really cool in the game. Right. Yeah. So what did you think? Right. I'm, I'm right there with you. I think um, a bit of the concern is that every new feature that is new to the series everyone is going to want all of them to carry over to the new game. And I mean, hopefully they do, but it's, it's not like it's not Nintendo doesn't, doesn't have to. And if they don't, there might be some complaints and, and, you know, it's understandable. You want everything to carry over, especially because the, the additions have been so cool. And so spot on with the, the theme and the, how Animal Crossing is. So I think it's like a double-edged sword. If you add it, people like it and they're going to want it on the new one. Um, my other concern, which is more of a concern than this one, is since they keep adding more things to Pocket Camp and they're making it more and more like a traditional Animal Crossing game, you know, to a degree, we know it's a mobile game, so it's not really going to feel like a traditional game, but in a way it is. Mm-hmm. I think that may be enough for some people and they might say, you know, Pocket Camp has filled the Animal Crossing void that I had since New Leaf. Um, you know, I might wait on the new one. I might wait a couple of years or I might not get it at all if if they keep updating Pocket Camp after the Switch Animal Crossing comes out. So um, it's it's a bit of a concern. I, I hope I'm wrong on that one. Yeah, and I think that calls to like his second part of the question. He asked, do you mm-hmm. think the market for Animal Crossing is getting too saturated with the steady flow of content in Pocket Camp? And I guess for me, I think the initial reactions from people or like a good amount of people were like, man, I really wish this was more like a full Animal Crossing game, you know? Right, right. And I think it's at the point where a lot of those people might have dropped off already and they're not as interested in the game uh, as they would be in a new one, you know? Right. So I think the people who are still playing Pocket Camp are people like us, essentially, you know, who just can't get enough of Animal Crossing. Right. (laughs) And so, yeah, I think we'll always be interested in more Animal Crossing. Right. And I think a lot of the people who are playing are also still going to be interested. Of course, I don't know how many people are playing who don't own a Switch or haven't played another Animal Crossing Mm. game before, you know? Right. Right. And so... I really wonder if that'll how much of that population is going to cross over into like the switch territory, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. And think like, oh man, I really like this mobile game. Maybe I want the full game, you know? Right. But then also that's you you know people who only play games on their phone like that's a big commitment, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. At least like you, if you just buying the switch alone is like 300 bucks right there right so that that's a lot of money to invest into a game and so yeah i i guess i'm not sure with the other types of audiences out there what the interest is going to be um but i know as far as like animal crossing fans go we're gonna eat up anything animal crossing (laughs) right Um, so i'm not incredibly worried about that Right, right. I mean, I, I had here in my notes that I, I wish Pocket Camp had a little more features that you could only do with a touchscreen or on a cell phone. I, I was even thinking, you know, more mini games like Break Tapper. But seeing your answer to, to this question, it brings up a good point. If 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 that's all they add, if it's only mini games or touchscreen oriented things, those wouldn't necessarily carry over to the main series. And people that are playing Animal Crossing for the first time with Pocket Camp, they would be expecting that and then the Switch version wouldn't offer 
most of that. So it's it's very interesting. I just I think by now we should just know what's coming so that we mm-hmm. wouldn't have to be speculating so much. Yeah. Well, uh, and I don't know. I find that interesting too because like there's that disconnect with players who have only played pocket camp and then they'll go into a new game and be like i can only carry 16 items what is this that's gonna be big (laughs) because there are some like big changes that have happened in animal crossing like through these like side titles that (laughs) are just like pretty great like quality of life things you Mm -hmm. know like inventory management so much easier in this game than others than like the main series you know right and so there's gonna be like a disconnect there where they're like man this is not how Mm. i played it whereas like for people who have played animal crossing first they saw the disconnect in animal crossing pocket camp yeah they're like this isn't everything that animal crossing should be you know (laughs) right so yeah it's hitting like that weird point that weird Mm -hmm. middle ground where it's not quite right for either side (laughs) right right yeah so i'm really interested to see how it'll cross over um i think next episode i wanted to kind of like discuss different things that we've seen in these like side titles Mm -hmm. that are really gonna change or are really changing how we perceive what the next animal crossing should or shouldn't do you know right right um but yeah that's a that's a discussion for next time (laughs) um (laughs) but yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be weird to see uh yeah like i said uh, i know the mobile gaming market's very different from you know the console or handheld gaming market Mm -hmm. and i think for the most part like i don't play too many mobile games essentially animal crossing is what i play um because just in general, I'm more into, I, you know, in general, I'm just into the Switch right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but, it, yeah, I, I'm excited to see. I, I'm still, like, trying to find as many stats from, like, Nintendo on Pocket Camp itself. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I'd like to know how much money they're making from the game. Um, no, well, right. Yeah, that's right. The who, who, right. Who, who's the bigger market? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so... Yeah, it, it's interesting. I I think for Animal Crossing fans, it's probably not too saturated. I think we're always going to want more. Um, <laughs> I think for more of like the casual players who like, you know, people who enjoy Animal Crossing for at least like a few months of mm-hmm. their time, because um, you can do a lot in a few months. That's mm-hmm. plenty of time. For, well, not for me, but plenty of time for a lot of people. <laughs> on animal crossing you know Mm -hmm. right um so i think for them they're probably looking for that next full title Mm -hmm. and i think for mobile gamers i don't know i'm I'm sure they'd be happy with the pocket cam stuff right and uh, we've talked about it like there are a lot of things that animal crossing has done that they could always add to pocket camp Mm -hmm. um things like the fishing tourneys that they're already doing right um and then there i think there may need to be things that are unique to pocket camp right right right. Mm -hmm. and i think the campsite's definitely a unique thing um but that's still something that adds stuff that i would want to see right (laughs) in the new one like i I want to see more outdoor furniture options and just like amenities and public works and yeah Right. See, like Pocket Camp can keep uh, Brake Tapper, but um, give us OK Motors for sure for the next mainline game. Oh my gosh, I need <laughs> I need those little birds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's gonna be heart wrenching, but also super exciting because I know some of the th- these ideas are gonna make it in, and some of these aren't. And right. I don't know. Even like the atmosphere of gaming is so different now where things are updated so regularly you have like Mm -hmm. we both play a lot of splatoon we see updates on that game all the time where they're adding new stages new weapons new clothing music all that stuff and i'm just like what uh, imagine an (laughs) animal crossing that just like receives some like major update like every month or something because that's insane (laughs) i'd be like 
it, it's nonstop playtime, right? Essentially, because yeah, if there's another big thing added, yeah, I don't know. So I'm always like features like being able to change your background. Like if they just added that one day to the game, right? Which is oh. totally possible at this point. Yeah. Like if we kept seeing stuff, small things like that, it would just like, I don't know, give more life to the game for a lot oh, yeah. more right. time. Right. Yep. So a- any, anything else you wanted to say about that? No, I mean, I do, I must insist that <laughs> we, we've always said that Nintendo releases a mobile game and then pretty much very soon thereafter, they announced the console or handheld version of said series. And we're still waiting on Animal Crossing, so <laughs> hopefully the the pattern continues and we hear something, hopefully, ah, by April. <laughs> yeah, I'm really hoping. I think I think we will. Uh, I'm more and more convinced. Um, there's some stuff out that we'll talk about next week, but I'm convinced that we, we <laughs> could see it at least by 2019, really. Right. I, I mean that that's me being generous but oh I want 2018 <laughs> so bad. Right. Uh, <laughs> um so yeah anyways thanks you thank you all for listening. If you enjoyed the show and want to see it grow even more, be sure to support us on Patreon. You could have your questions answered just like Dragon along with many different ways to make your voice heard. Um I even make special let's plays for patrons things like Desert Island Escape where I take your favorite non-villager npcs and play a level of desert island escapism Mm. which is pretty fun um you get our friend codes to stuff and so we can play together some games i think i've got my wii u 3ds and switch friend code on there right um for anybody who becomes a patron and sergio you even offer some cool art rewards too Right. Um, so lots of really cool things to take advantage of on the Discord. And, you know, it's only a dollar a month, so it's pretty cool. Um, if you could, leave us a review wherever you're listening. Um, reviews really help to get this show seen by more people. We just want to attract more Animal Crossing fans, get a bigger community going on the Discord, and, you know, give people something great to listen to about their favorite game (laughs) um and if you want to be a part of this community we have a discord it's a haken in animal crossing discord um it's pretty it's a cool place to be there's a link in the description of this episode wherever you're listening um just check the description i know it gets a little jumbled up on like itunes and other apps but somewhere on there it says discord and there's a link there um (laughs) if you don't know what discord is it's kind of like a skype thing um essentially we have a bunch of chat rooms where we talk about animal crossing and you'll hear sergio and i always just bring up animal crossing switch because we (laughs) want it so bad right um and then yeah i guess once again i'm your host chewy plays nintendo and i'm here with sergio and we hope you have a great week Bye, everybody.